Kentucky is the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament, and they are through the first round. But how dominant have they looked so far? For the answer to that question, we turn to Mike DeCourcy, Sporting News college basketball writer. He is in Louisville, and Mike, Kentucky fans are notorious for worrying about their team. What should they be concerned about right now? I think their primary concern needs to be that offensively they still have not made all the progress that they're capable of making. And it's getting to the point now where they're running out of time to do that. They, they could have as few as one more game to try to address what is missing from an offense that has the capability to be nearly unstoppable. They have excellent weapons. I don't think they play selfishly but I don't think they always think the possession all the way through to the, to the logical conclusion. So is this just a case of a team not playing with maximum offensive efficiency? Yes. With the way they have themselves set up, with all the ability that they have to shoot and to drive the ball, if they made one more pass on every possession or two more passes on every possession, they could get the defense disarmed to the point where they would be nearly unstoppable. You would, be, you would basically put yourselves in a position where only you could stop yourself by missing the shot that you create. And Kentucky, I've, I've talked about this through much of the season, being fairly patient about it because it's a young team and because that's what the season is for, to continue to improve. I believe that their success, their ability to win at such a high level, never losing a, a Southeastern Conference game, I think that stagnated them some. I think they be, they believed that it was good enough to just continue to play the way they played, and there and it's possible that they could win it all playing that way. But it's mu it's more likely that they could win it all if they got around to making that extra pass. What I mean by that is if you make the extra pass, the defense is now off balance, and you're putting a player like a Michael Kidd Gilchrist who's a great driver of the ball, or you're putting a player like Anthony Davis who is so difficult to defend because of his size and length, you're putting them in positions where the defense is off balance, off step, you have a step on them, and now you've got the, the lane to drive to the goal, and there's nothing they can do but basically hope you miss and play for the rebound. And what are the chances that they're able to figure this out uh, before they get knocked out of the tournament? I look back to the team that's most comparable, not in terms of style of play, but in terms of overall ability coming into a tournament and what its potential was. And then we go back to 2009 Carolina. Honestly, 2009 Carolina was not great through the first two rounds of the 2009 tournament. Part of that was that Ty Lawson, their point guard, had been injured and, and was really kind of just working himself back in. But those two games, they were not exceptional. In fact, they even were pressed in their, eight, in their second round game against LSU and had to squeeze out one at the end. And then they got to the Sweet 16, and no one was even worth being on the floor with them from that point on. And that's still possible for Kentucky. But they first have to get through Iowa State to do that. And to do that, it certainly would be good, again, to take it and make that extra pass against a defense that is not elite. They have an elite defender in Chris Babb. That's one guy. You've got five who can score. So even if Babb takes out one, if you're making the pass, then you can still score and you can still win the game. Now, I know you've known Coach John Calipari for a long time. How is he feeling about this? I think he's a little frustrated by it. I do believe that he was pleased not so much to lose, but to have the motivational force of a loss from the Vanderbilt game in the SEC championship game. That somewhat got the players' attention, but their Western Kentucky opener wasn't good. When you get to this point in the season, you're a little tired. You, you're expecting the opposing team to not really challenge you, and Western Kentucky really didn't have the juice to present a challenge. But I know that he was not pleased with the overall performance in that game. It's, 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 a, it's a good possibility that the players were awakened by what Iowa State did to Connecticut, how dominant they were, how really gifted Royce White is, and that they will pr bring an A effort on Saturday and then get ready for the three or four days that they have to practice up for the next round. That's often the way it is after a sluggish start for a team like a Kentucky, a, a, a one facing a 16. That 8-9 game isn't always as difficult as you might think. But this is a different kind of team in Iowa State. They're not conventional. Royce White is a different player than anybody I've ever seen, a 6'8", 6'7", power forward who plays point guard uh, and does it almost all through, uh, through his, his bulk and strength and, and then on top of it his passing ability. 
So it's a really different kind of team. They space the floor really well. They make shots. So Kentucky's going to have to be very alert about what Royce White can do to them, and they can't just count on bringing their own performance and, and bringing that up a level. All right, Mike DeCourcy out in Louisville. Thank you very much. Of course, Kentucky taking on Iowa State on Saturday. We'll see how they handle it for all your coverage. Stay with Sporting News. I'm Tom Vandervoort, and we will see you next time.